recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff. This is Triviality. The cream of the crop. Hey, welcome to Triviality, the game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Ken. I'm here with Neil, Jeff, and Matt. What's up? Hey. hey. We got him. We right. got him back. He's back. Which means he caught him. He caught the killer. Matt yeah. is back. Back, back again. again. <laughs> yes, tell a friend. Yeah, you were in Australia, Matt. Yeah. You were searching for the Summerton... The Summerton man? Man, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, yeah. It's summer down there. Got some rays. No, I believe. You're not understanding what's happening. <laughs> I don't I don't have to. I don't listen to the show, so... <laughs> You'll have to ask Kiana. Yeah, I'll make sure. She'll, she'll to tell that. you all about the Summerton Man. Yes, Fair if, if that's correct. Yes, I can't even remember. I I think it is Summerton Man. Well, in the studio today we have a special guest host, Michael Miller. He's from Champaign, Illinois, which is where the uh, the you know, if you make a sparkling wine and it's called Champagne, it has to be from Champaign, Illinois, right? Mm-hmm. That is that is true. And actually, uh, uh, Urbana, you could make it in Urbana as well. Okay, oh, yeah, sounds good. Uh, but. Yeah, I am. I am from a brewery, Triptych Brewing, down in the Champaign Urbana area uh, in Savoy. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, uh, I do sales and marketing for them, and I also write trivia questions for Russ Friedwald from time to time. Ah, ah Russ. yes, friend of the show. Yeah, uh, in Twin City trivia. So if you're ever in the uh, Champaign area, Springfield, that area at all, uh, pop by one of those trivia shows and mm. you might have some of my questions. Awesome. And when you're not uh, working for uh, Triptych Brewing, you're also a United States champion. Yes, uh, and I defend it any chance I get. <laughs> well, thank you so much for that contribution. We surely appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And thank you for driving all the way up here. Uh, what was the drive, like two and, two and a half hours? Oh, it was mm. it was right around two hours. Two hours, uh, yeah, we appreciate that, taking listening to us on the ride and then coming listening yeah. to us in, in studio. live in the studio yeah it's nice to have guests sometimes yeah and now he's going to get the magic behind the curtain experience where he'll see how much we actually cut <laughs> <laughs> and how much is needed to be cut correct yeah, yeah. well michael i've uh, i've given the rules guy a couple of your tri- uh, triptych beers to, to sample so let's see how he handles after five or so triptych beers Rules guy. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. You know that I'm the cream of the crop. Sounds nearly exactly the same. Mm, Boy, beat. He could drive home, yeah. Yeah. not slurred at all. That's yeah, the Andre the Giant of rules, guys. <laughs> he just soaks it up. Yep. R.I.P. Not the rules guy. Andre the guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing fine. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Darren. Darren. Darren the rules guy. Darren the rules guy. Yeah, so um, let's see about uh, teams now after that great reading. What do, what are you guys thinking? J- Matt and Jeff today? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, in honor of our hosts, I believe we are going to be Team Champagne Wishes. Ah, okay. little uh, Robin Leach reference there. Mm-hmm. So I guess that leaves uh, Neil and myself. Yeah. Now are we going to go on their, their note there? and what So a, we'll be whatever. Caviar Dreams. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. We're Caviar Dreams. And I guess uh, we since we're in the studio by ourselves, no guests, a nice guest host here, we have to do uh, some sort of wager. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so Jeff and I were playing a little DDR recently, Dance Dance Revolution. So what what if the losing team has to record a video of doing their best job playing DDR and then we post that? I'm very uncoordinated on, for the losers. On Maniac, is that what we're deciding? On Maniac, it doesn't matter what it's on. It's for me anyway, I don't. Yeah. Now, do I have to dance? I guess I would, right? Yeah. On DDR? Okay. I mean, if you can call DDR dancing, then yes. So the, so the way to. it goes is me and Jeff are pretty good. And Neil and Matt are pretty bad, but I think I don't think they've ever even maybe played. I think it's. Uh, I have a pad. I was fifteen once. I think so it's. You guys know. <laughs> I think it's entertaining either way. So that'll be the wager today, guys. Okay, that sounds good. So uh, yeah, this time it's personal. Rambo. Right. Well, Michael, if you're ready, take it away. All right, round one, question one. In the English version of the board game Scrabble, what is the only letter worth five points? No, it's definitely we're locked in. It's definitely the first. Oh, actually, that you guys are locked in. Yes. Okay, so we're we. He wrote down K. I wrote down J, and we're kind of. You're in a Men in Black mood. Yeah. <laughs> K's really yes. sticking in my head. Yeah. I uh, think for we're talking about five, right? Yeah. I think Q might be eight. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, cause I think that you just always get the QU. So I don't know yeah. if they downgraded that from a, from a 10. Well, I remember these from when I was looking up, um, trying to find the highest Scrabble score for a sports team. Okay. And I remember jazz was the highest for basketball and that was the J and the A and then the two Z's. So well, I think J might was actually the total? be eight. It was, I think it was 20. It was high. It okay. was. And well, because the A was one, Z's are 10, right? Okay. Yeah. So it's definitely higher than five. So do you want to go with K? Yeah, let's do that. We are locked in with K. And right away, I signed the letter K to Neil. So we're going to also go with K. And the correct answer is K. All Ooh. right. Good start. Uh, speaking of Men in Black, what's the name of the little gun that he shoots, Will Smith? Not Chirper, Flea it, Flicker. What is it? The, the Noisy, noisy cricket. cricket. Noisy Cricket. The Noisy <laughs> Cricket getting wicked on you. It's from the you song. Go. Oh, Let's yeah. See. There you go. Nice, nice lyrics. <laughs> All right. Moving on to question two. The K in vitamin K comes from the German spelling of what word? Mm. And vitamin K contains many of the proteins needed for this process. Hmm. This one's on you, buddy. Does that make sense? Yeah. Let's lock in. Okay. We're locked in. What are you thinking? I'm thinking I should learn how to science better. Hmm. That's kind of your thing, though. It is sort of kind of my thing once in a while. It's a problem. Do you have any thoughts on this one? No, I kind of stopped listening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> something about a process. When you're on a team with Jeff and it's a science question. I tune it out immediately. All we, right. we all do. Me, Digestion. Well, the, the, K, the first K I think of when I think science is, is the K for potassium, right? Mm-hmm. But I can't think of a process that goes with that. Can you? No. Well, potassium is... Uh, Cap- capital punishment? What does potassium do? I forget. Oh, K- sodium and potassium uh, are regulated in your blood. Yeah. It keeps you from cramping up. I mean, I can, yeah. As a, I just know that uh, LeBron Gotta eat James your banana and get your so daily get dose of radiation. That's right. <laughs> oh, radiation. That's not a thing. <laughs> no, not in this context. Um, um, the only K cycle that I know is the Krebs cycle. Okay. Does that help? I don't think it thing? does. Dang. We can still go with it, though. Yeah. Fine. Listen, we're going to say it helps with the Krebs cycle. Hmm. Uh, yeah, we weren't sure. Uh, science isn't our forte, so we just said ketosis. Mm. It's a big fad right now. Yeah, it is a big fad. Unfortunately, no points for that one. Uh, the K in vitamin K comes from the German spelling of coagulation. Oh. oh. It's got to do with the blood. Mm. I got it now. Moving on to question three. What surname is shared by Chris Farley's character in Tommy Boy and Clint Eastwood's character in the Dirty Harry series? We are locked in. I'll get there. It's the, it's the name of the... Um, Spark plugs. Um, Did you eat paint chips as a kid, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Oh. <laughs> uh, oh, I forgot Rob Lowe's in that movie. I always forget he's in that movie. Yeah, he makes out with his sister. Yeah. Good movie. God, it's uh, it's gonna it's gonna kill me right now. Something auto parts. What the hell is the name of it? it it's. Do you have any ideas? No, I'm trying to remember. I think it starts with an H, but I'm not sure now. Uh, Callahan. It's Callahan. There you oh, go. Oh, wow. What a poll. Uh, we put Callahan. Yes, that is correct. Very <laughs> impressive. Way to get it at the last minute. It is Tommy Callahan. Callahan's Auto Parts. Yes, there you go. Was it uh, brake pads, right? Brake pads, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, speaking of Farley, the um, Adam Sandler tribute he does at the end of his Netflix special is awesome. Have you seen it? Mm-mm. It's really great. So if you just Google um, Adam Sandler, Chris Farley song, it's uh, really emotional. He ends his special with it. It's like a tribute to him and his friendship. It's really cool. Is he funny in it? I haven't. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Surprising. Surprising. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Question four. A Jewish bar mitzvah, uh, Jewish bar mitzvah ceremony is held when a boy turns 13. At what age is a girl's bat mitzvah celebrated? Mm. Hmm. Does this have anything to do with future I'm a bot mitzvah? I don't believe so. Mm. I was really hoping the question was what age is 13? a bar mitzvah? Yeah, <laughs> I was all <laughs> over that. Yep. Did, okay. All right. We're going to lock in. Okay. So I guess the big question is, is before or after? I think it's before. I would also say I before. I was thinking 12, and weirdly. 12 seems right, but maybe it's earlier. Maybe it's 11. I think we're right in that range. If we go after, I'm thinking the, I'm, the only reason I might be thinking that was like a quinceanera was the yeah. only thing I was thinking of okay. would be later. And then a sweet 16. Yeah. Every, everyone's got these kind of I things. I weirdly think, I think it's, I'm thinking it's 12. Okay. So I don't know how you feel about that. I have no strong opinion. Okay. So we we'll can. lock in with 12. Your office uh, quinceanera was just awesome. However you put that together, Jeff. Um, 
Office I, themed. Office themed quinceanera. Um, I looked at Ken and uh, I wrote down three numbers and he signed. I didn't sign anything. I We selected 11 just because I hear girls mature faster than boys. Mm-hmm. So they say. Mm-hmm. You went 11. Well, it is true that girls mature faster than boys. And the correct answer is 12. All um, right. Well, we had it down. We're close. Question five. Also the name of a magazine published by Condé Nast. What 1848 English novel was subtitled A Novel Without a Hero? Yeah, I have. I mean, I don't have any. That's just kind of based off context clues. Okay. I've got nothing, so I'm willing to trust you on yeah. wherever direction you're headed. Or it could be. Don't you remember the great novel, Career Opportunities? <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys locked in? Um, let's let's lock in. Okay. I'll, I'll lock in with what I said. All right. The first one. Can you think of some uh, magazine names that might have to do with travel? I feel like Con Nast is travel. And I'm trying to think of a novel that would go along with that, but... Um, I didn't think of that. <laughs> when I wrote down Jugs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it's not Oliver Twist. So now, Great Expectations. Uh, I don't know why I'm thinking of um, Dickens, but I'm trying to think of travel. How do you feel about Great Expectations? Okay. All right. No, I'm unsure, but we're going to lock in with that. What you lock in with? Great Expectations. Oh, so I just picked a magazine that sounded like if it was a... A book, it would have no hero, and we just said fortune. Uh, no points on this one either. The correct answer, the novel without a hero, Vanity Fair. Mm. Oh, that makes sense, too. Mm. At the end of five questions, it looks like uh, we got 20 points over here. You got, you guys got 30 over that there? That is correct. Yep. All right, let's put our dancing shoes on, it looks like. <laughs> and perfect time to put on your dancing shoes with no relation to the young, wild, and free rapper, what Dubai skyscraper is currently the tallest building in the world at over 2,700 feet? Okay, hold on. I'll get there. Reluctant. What are you thinking? How did they get there so fast? Why am I not remembering this? Uh, the Burj Khalifa? Oh, yeah. Wiz Khalifa is the uh, the rapper, right? Yep. So what did you say? The Burj Khalifa? We are locked in with that. Yeah, we said the same, Burj Khalifa. And the answer is Burj Khalifa. All right. Or the Khalifa Tower. Mm. Their New Year's uh, display this year was uh, really cool. Really? Like fireworks coming from the side of the building. It had like a video screen projected onto it with the numbers counting down. Tom mm-hmm. Cruise jumped off the top. Tom Cruise jumped and scaled, yep. The uh, the time difference um, for observing fasting, uh, if you're of the Islamic faith, um, is like eight minutes from the top of the tower to the bottom. They had to like slightly alter mm. some practices because the the sun sets so much later. Mm-hmm. You could actually watch sunset at the ground and then take the tower up and see it again, and then watch sunset like five minutes later. Wow, that's how quick the elevators are. Travels and in how time. Tall it is. That's so cool. <laughs> Uh, I would love to go there, but unfortunately, as a side note, I sort of can't support some of the horrible things they do. So. P.S. I know it's not a time machine. I was just kidding. <laughs> All right, question seven. What avian animal's head appears on the handle of Mary Poppins's umbrella? Did you see the new Mary Poppins? I have not yet. Mm. We're no. locked in. Did you go see it Christmas Day? No, we didn't. We, we didn't. Oh, nobody, we nobody here has seen it, but we are locked in. Yeah, we saw mm. Vice. Wow. Yeah. They have an umbrella? No umbrella in Vice. Oh, that's a shame. Just an umbrella corporation. Yeah. I don't know. So it's a bird, obviously. Mm-hmm. He said avian. So okay. We're looking at birds. Like eagle? Hawk? No, Falcon? I think it's more Put like... Put a bird on it. I think more stork. Stork? A loon? A loon. Interesting. It's... A flamingo. A crow. She's British. Peacock. Are there any British birds? Ostrich. I don't, <laughs> I don't think it's an ostrich. Uh, Maybe see. a goose. Magpies are sort of British-ish. Okay. I like those. And Neil does too. Yeah. So you want to go magpie? Yeah, magpie. Magpie it is. I believe that's a peafowl or a peacock. Hmm. Unfortunately, no. It is actually a parrot. Wow. Mm. He said a lot of birds. Did not say that one. (laughs) All right. Question eight. While it may not give you wings, what common energy drink ingredient was first isolated from the bile of an ox and is now synthesized in labs? We're good. You know what? Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, you're locked in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it, uh, taurine? Taurine. 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 Yeah. Yeah, we're going to go with taurine. Yep, not 100% sure how it's pronounced, taurine or taurine, but uh, 
Taurine. Taurine is correct. All right. Sweet. Taurine, Taurine. From the Greek from Tauros, I would believe. I know yeah. Matt still drinks balls energy drink. <laughs> God, <laughs> I love guarana so much. Oh, guarana. What a, what a great uh, ingredient there. Is yeah. that a, from a plant of some sort? Probably. Yeah. yeah. The guarana plant. What about the guarana? The guarana. Just Featuring. throw some creatine in there and we'll have the triple threat. Yeah. So. yeah. 2005 was a weird time for everybody. Okay. Question nine. Singer Jackson Brown began his career with what Fishin' in the Dark Country rock band, mm. which the newest NHL mascot might be a big fan of? Mm. I don't want to let the mascot down. Well, I don't know this one. I didn't realize he was in a country band. I know I could Jackson. Just go see the doctor to get my eyes checked so I could see the right answer. Fishin' in the Dark? Is that a song? Must be, yeah. I, man, I know a lot of songs by Jackson Brown, and you know he's featured uh, heavily in. Fast Times at Ridgemont High, but I can't think of a country band he was in. But we have the reference of the newest mascot, which we all know is Gritty. We didn't lock in yet. You know it's Gritty. Come yeah, on, of course we all know. It's gritty. Shut up, Matt. Ken with his googly eye enameled pin of, of Gritty over there. We all kneel at the altar of Gritty. I love Gritty. <laughs> Man. Social justice warrior. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I, I don't know. I didn't know he was in a country band. I can't think of a famous... like. Let's, um, let's say uh, Gritty Sheets. Gritty Sheets. The Gritty Sheets. Try to take a nap after you go to the beach. Yeah. Get your gritty sheets. I see that. Man, if gritty's in the name, I definitely don't know it. Yeah. Maybe it's just, maybe it's like True Grit, the band. Is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> and I keep confusing him with uh, Stephen Stills, who was in Buffalo Springfield. So Gritty? He was not. No. <laughs> gritty is Jackson Stephen Brown. Stills. <laughs> I knew it. Uh, yeah, you want to go, go True Grit? Oh, we could do Gritty, Stills, and Nash. <laughs> And young. And, well, no, well, young, young wasn't was there later. yet. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're locked in with Gertie Stills and Nash. Uh, well, you'll have to come down to Champagne sometime because there are plenty of bars that play this band uh, down there. Fishing in the Dark was by Nitty Gritty Dirt mm. Band. Ooh, the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. A band that I have heard of. So Still couldn't put it together. What other songs did Jackson Brown do I, I mean i know the one from fast times is uh doctor my eyes somebody's baby tonight yeah, he did somebody's baby he did doctor my eyes he rolling did on uh, empty. Rolling, running on empty running on, on empty. empty yeah running on empty. okay i always mix him up with manford man who wrote a lot of mm-hmm. songs and covered a lot of uh, other songs yeah question 10 at what college which literally means western did barack obama spend his first two years of undergrad yeah, did he study there? You got any ideas? I've got some, but I think they're going to maybe He's, lock in. He studied at the other one, too. Did he go to school there first and then transfer into the, in that area? So oh. could it be like a place in that area? You're locking in? We're locked in, yeah. Okay. So he got his law degree from Harvard. Mm-hmm. I believe he graduated his undergraduate degree from the University of Chicago. I, yes, that is true. But he grew up in Hawaii. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if he had attended like University of Hawaii, like Manoa. And that um, could mean West. Yeah, what's what's isn't there? Uh, there's a Honolulu, right? That means uh, like Safe Harbor or okay. Calm Harbor or something like that. Um, there's a school that hosts um, a basketball tournament every year in Hawaii. Yeah, it starts with a C. I don't even know if it's right. What which Hawaiian school do you want to? Well, I I was thinking of the University of Hawaii. Okay, I don't know if Hawaii means Western or there's also Hawaii at Manoa. Okay. Which is maybe, you know, I feel like if Hawaii meant Western, we would have, I would have heard that, but. We can lock in with Hawaii. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We thought it was somewhere in Hawaii, possibly. Uh, maybe he, he was there before he went uh, to his undergrad, undergrad and finished it. So we just put Kauai. Occidental College in Los Angeles. Oh, oh okay. I had never heard that before. Occidental. All right. At the end of the first round, it looks like we're hanging out with 40 points. You guys are up uh, one question, 50 points. Yeah. Before we go to the swing round, you work for Triptych Brewing. Uh, what is your favorite beer that you guys Ooh, brew? The favorite beer that, that we brew, definitely Dank Meme. Dank mm-hmm. Meme, yeah. It's, it's uh, hazy, East Coast style pale ale. Um, very easy drinking and accessible. Uh, I, I really enjoy that one. We also do a bunch of uh, barrel-aged stouts, um, other hazy hoppy beers. And yeah, we uh, just have another one that's coming out soon, which is... 
more of an easy drinking light lager called No Big Deal. But mm. we like uh, we definitely like to make fun of ourselves and and reference pop culture whenever possible. Yeah, so you and, have yeah. a sticker on your laptop that says "A wizard is never late." Is a that... wizard is never late. A uh, reference to Lord of the Rings. Yeah, Neil didn't get it. Yeah. I didn't get it. I don't know. What that, I thought it was Harry Potter. Maybe is that another <laughs> beer? Uh, yeah, that's another beer. Um, brought you guys some samples of Dank Meme and A Wizard yes. is Never Late. I will be pounding some celebratory dank memes after this match. <laughs> Maybe oh. some conciliatory. Yeah, well, either or. Uh, Win or lose, we boost. Any excuse. Right? Any, any excuse to consume a dank meme. Uh, <laughs> what uh, website can people go to to check it out? Uh, TrypticBrewing.com or check us out on Facebook. Sweet. Awesome. And it's spelled exactly like you don't think it is. <laughs> T-R-I-P-T-Y-C-H. Good segue because we are going to be doing a swing round about beer. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I will give you a, a, a description of a beer or also a, uh, another clue in there to help you get the name of the beer. Uh, for example, if I would say it is a phrase from, uh, Lord of the Rings mm. or a beer, a hazy beer from Triptych, you would say... Wizard is never late. Correct. Okay. So these are all Nor craft Zero beers late. from uh, from larger breweries uh, okay. around the U.S. Stuff we would know, or yeah. at least had heard of. Perfect. So the first one, the area code of downtown Chicago and a wheat ale by Goose Island. Next, a Shakespearean king of the fairies and a wheat ale by Bells. A sport that is only played right-handed and a pale ale by Cigar City. July 4th, 1876 in America and an IPA by Founders. The largest ship to sink on the Great Lakes and a porter by Great Lakes Brewing. The Punisher, Travis Bickle or Captain Jack Sparrow and an IPA by Revolution Brewing. An official greeting in Hindi and a wit beer by Dogfish Head. A 1980s song by ACDC and a black IPA by 21st Amendment. Black Volcanic Glass and a stout by Deschutes. Nice. And first century Roman author born Gaius Secundus. And an Imperial IPA by Russian River. All right, I'll go through those one more time with uh, numbers on each one mm-hmm. this time. One, the area code of downtown Chicago and a wheat ale by Goose Island. Two, Shakespearean King of the Fairies and a wheat ale by Bells. Three, sport that is only played right handed and a pale ale by Cigar City. Four, July 4th, 1876 in America, and an IPA by Founders. Five, the largest ship to sink on the Great Lakes, and a porter by Great Lakes Brewing. Six, the Punisher, Travis Bickle or Captain Jack Sparrow, and an IPA by Revolution Brewing. Uh, Seven, an official greeting in Hindi and a wit beer by Dogfish Head. Eight, a 1980 song by ACDC and a black IPA by 21st Amendment. Nine, black volcanic glass and a stout by Deschutes. And ten, first century Roman author born Gaius Secundus and an imperial IPA by Russian River. All right, so we took a quick moment to come up with these answers and everybody seems to be locked in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, answers for that one. The area code of downtown chicago we went with uh 312 mm-hmm. yeah that's one we see yeah. all over the place around here yeah debating 708 but i guess we locked in 312 <laughs> 312 no 847 <laughs> 312 is correct number two the shakespearean king of the fairies uh yeah this one luckily i played this character king of the fairies and that would be oberon mm-hmm. one of my favorite beers is oberon oberon is correct number three uh, sport that is only played right-handed. Yeah, this one stumped us. Uh, we just went with arm wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were completely off track, and then Jeff stumbled onto something. Uh, what would you say? So we, we had gone through basically every racket sport we could think of, and then we're like, what about fencing? Maybe you can only do that one way as per the sports requirements, so we guessed fencing. 
you guys actually did mention it. Uh, it is High Ally. Oh. Oh. Always with the High Ally. That's a good uh, beer name, too. Yeah. yeah, it is. Number four. July 4th, 1876 in America. Yeah, we thought uh, 100 years. Uh, it would be Centennial. Mm-hmm. Also said Centennial. And also the name of the hops used in it, Centennial. Right. Number five, the largest ship to sink on the Great Lakes. Uh, this is uh, the Edmund Fitzgerald. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, also locked in with Edmund Fitzgerald. Church uh, bell rang till it rang 29 times. So uh, That is the Edmund Fitzgerald. Number six. Uh, yeah, we uh, found those all to be anti-heroes. Mm-hmm. Another one of my favorite beers, uh, Antihero. That is a good beer from Revolution, Antihero. Uh, number seven, an official greeting in Hindi. Yeah, I thought this was Buddhist, but the uh, best we could do is Namaste. We agree. We thought it was Namaste. Namaste. Oh, Hindi the language. Correct. Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> number eight, a 1980 song by ACDC. Yeah, uh, we, there's a lot to choose from, but we thought Back in Black sounded like a good beer, so we went Back in Black. We, we talked about Back in Black, but I'm pretty sure that there's a beer called Hell's Bells, so we locked in with Hell's Bells. There is a beer called Hell's Bells, but not by uh, not by 21st Amendment. The beer is Back in Black. Mm. Uh, number nine, Black Volcanic Glass. Uh, we guessed Obsidian. Oh, we thought it was Dragon Glass. No, we said Obsidian. Yes, uh, Deschutes Obsidian Stout. And 10, first century Roman author. Gaius Secundus. Um, we thought maybe his uh, alternate name was Biggus Dickus. <laughs> uh, we thought this was uh, the younger of the Plinies, so we said Pliny. Mm. Uh, with just saying Pliny, you are right. The beer is Pliny or Pliny the Elder. All right. Ooh. Nice, Jeff. Good pull from Jeff. 40 points from that round, bringing us up to 90 points. And we gained 40 as well, and looks like we're going to be at 80. Ooh, close game. Yes. All right. That went better than expected. It did. I was <laughs> surprised, actually. The little clues helped. Those were great. Mm. All right. Moving on to round two. Biggest Dickus was not correct. Then. <laughs> no. well, it's, well, now we have someone here who knows beer. Maybe we all just make Biggest Dickus. We don't actually know. The historical records aren't that accurate, so we don't know for sure. He could have been. <laughs> Okay, going to question one, round two, round two, question one. Also a dirty question. The highest inhabitable islands in the world lie at over 12,000 feet above sea level in what naughty-sounding South American lake? Oh, Um, we're locked in. (laughs) Do you know any naughty lakes? Titicaca. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that a real place? Yeah. (laughs) If you say so. Only in my dreams. (laughs) Uh, Lake Titicaca. Yeah, I think they have uh, some of the most um, active storms, too, like lightning strikes there a bunch of times, but we said Lake Titicaca. Uh, Mainly because I wanted to hear you guys say that on (laughs) air. Yes, the answer is Lake Titicaca. Now you've said it, too. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Question two. The 2003 documentary The Fog of War told 11 lessons from the life of what former U.S. Secretary of Defense? Hmm. I know this. Uh, um, what was the year? 2003. 2003. I remember that's, seeing this right when I got to college. That's probably too early for that. We can lock in with that one. I, I mean, I he mean, would have been the right era for some of the stuff that would have been big preceding the okay. post 9-11 world. But You're locked in? Mm, yeah make it lock in Don't. lock it in i think it was about vietnam i think he had glasses and the only name that's coming to my head canon if you know any other secretary's defense i believe bruce greenwood played him in the post for spielberg it was robert mcnamara i think that's the only guy i can think of so i don't know if his first name's robert but we're just gonna go mcnamara yeah mcnamara's not a bad guess we went uh kissinger mcnamara is not a bad guess it is a correct guess mm. Ooh. Good job. Robert S. McNamara. Getting it from a movie. Yeah. I remember, I just remember seeing it when it came out. It was like, uh, you know, it was like the first, one of the first political documentaries I saw, right, mm-hmm. right going into college. So it kind of stuck with me. I just could, knew he had glasses, and that's why I took a guess there. Question three. 
Sir Edmund Hillary, Kate Shepard, and Queen Elizabeth II all appear on current bank, bank notes from what nation? Can I get the names one more time? Sir Edmund Hillary, Kate Shepard, and Queen Elizabeth II. Reluctant. Okay. Are you thinking it's it's an maybe an African colony, or would it be... No, I was thinking it was... An, um, Hillary was the first one to summit Everest, right? Or do I have the wrong person in mind? No, that sounds right. So, well, I, so that's in Nepal. And that was a former British Indian territory. Okay. So, I don't know if they're still affiliated, but we could say, yeah, that. I mean, that makes sense, right? Yeah. Nepal. We'll go Nepal. We're just gonna keep it simple and go Canada. Uh, I was wondering if I would lead you astray, and I did. Uh, Sir Edmund Hillary and Kate Shepherd are both from New Zealand. Mm. Oh. Hmm. Oh, they don't have Peter Jackson on their currency. Weirdly, not yet. Not yet. weirdly okay. that would have been my second guess. Don't know why, oh. but it's Kiwis. Probably because I was just looking at Australian banknotes the other day. Flight of the Concords on, on yeah. currency. <laughs> Question four: The Japanese company YYK Group is the largest manufacturer of what item, which most people touch several times a day? We are locked in. All right. Uh, YYK, I believe, is the zipper company. Yeah. I always thought they were Chinese, but we know that they're on zippers, so we went zippers. And I, I'll i have to double check, uh, but it is zippers. I might have typed it incorrectly. but Well, I also could be wrong. That happens. <laughs> Jeff all wrong? Time. No way. <laughs> all the time. We'll edit it out if Jeff's wrong. Cause <laughs> I want Rush to do a cover of YYK mm-hmm. instead of YYZ. It wouldn't be a cover. Ah, Toronto Pearson's Airport. Song. It would be Just a different be about song. Zippers. <laughs> Just, yeah. about zippers. <laughs> Just about zippers. Still like a nine-minute instrumental, though? Yeah. <laughs> Question five. What three-letter affair during the presidency of John Adams led to the quasi-war with France and the fledgling United States? Oh, it's the first thing that came to mind, and I don't know where else I would have gotten it from. Okay, we can, we can lock in with okay. your crazy hunch. I can't picture Paul Giamatti doing it, so it's, I'm not pulling it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say BTS. BTS? Okay, he's a Korean boy band. Yeah, big fan of the <laughs> Korean boy band. Ahead of its time. For some reason, I thought this was the XYZ affair. Hmm. His fly was down and, and called him out on it. From YYK to XYZ. Oh. Yes, the XYZ affair. Jeff picking up on the clues there. Uh, question six, more American history. What state capitals board of education was at the center of the Supreme Court case, Brown versus the Board of Education? We're locked in. Mm-hmm. What state capital? Right. Oh, you need the state oh. or the capital? Uh, I mean, I'll give you both. Okay. But yeah, okay. go ahead and give me both. Let's actually go Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi? Okay. All right, so a little bit of backstory. Ryan Clefcore Myers uh, probably wanted to kick my ass after I told him that Kansas was admitted as a slave state. They were not. They were a free state. They are also the state in question, as it is Topeka, Kansas. And the state capital in the case brown versus the board of education is topeka kansas all right, all right. thank you ryan slash apologies for uh besmirching the good name of kansas ryan candy corn myers coming through <laughs> again. how great would it have been if if uh michael just said uh, i'm sorry that's actually incorrect <laughs> you're, you're so indianapolis. confident indianapolis you're so confident also a free state question seven after mentioning his love of a video game on ellen Friend star Matthew Perry voiced the mobster character Benny in a game from what post-apocalyptic franchise? I don't, I don't know, but that was where my gut went. The, the timing seems right, so we are locked in. Okay. What video games can, are post-apocalyptic? The one you wrote down, Fallout. Most of them. There's a lot of voices in that too, so yeah. there is. Uh, is that the one with the little guy with the thumbs up? Yeah. Uh, the um, the thing is, is why would he be well? Are there yeah, any, like, Ellen wasn't a show when Friends was on, so yeah, let's go Fallout. Okay. Yeah, we said Fallout. Yeah, in the video game Fallout New Vegas, Matthew Perry voiced Benny. Oh yeah, actually I remember that. <laughs> Who is Benny? It's like a robot, right? Uh, no, he's a checkered suit wearing mobster. Oh. <laughs> so maybe you don't remember. There is a robot. <laughs> no, I don't. I haven't played it. I, I watched uh. it being played. Could I be any more wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Question eight. Besides having the in their name, what do the bands the Bee Gees, the Breeders, the National, and the Proclaimers all have in common? 
Nope. Were they nope. all were they all on American Idol? They were not, okay. as it turns out. I'm Barry Gibb. <laughs> <laughs> Talking it up. I actually met uh, Matt Berenger from the National one time. I've seen the breeders. You guys still thinking? I know who the Bee Gees are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We wrote down a couple things, Do have, um, a couple maybe attributes. Like a... They're very different bands. So yeah. They do. I think this is right. Okay. I don't know why. We're locking in. I can't tell you why. Jeff's on fire today, so we're going to lock in. Okay. Okay. And they do. I would walk 1,000 miles. Yeah. yeah. 500 miles. Um, or maybe they're Scottish. I can't remember. All right. Nationals, American. Mm-hmm. BGs Breeders are, are American. Breeders be- Breeders have uh, the uh, the lady from the Pixies whose name is escaping The bass me. player? The bass player is in the yeah. Breeders. Um, well, the Bee Gees, actually, they might be Australian. The Bee Gees. So it's not a nationality thing, I'm pretty sure. Well, the Bee Gees are brothers, and so are the Proclaimers, I think. The Breeders are mostly, if not all, female. Okay. So they're not brothers? No, no. not no. brothers. Siblings? No. no, I don't think there's any siblings in the National. What else would it be? I mean, did they it's all... It's funny because the National sings in a, a low baritone, mm-hmm. and the Bee Gees sing in that high falsetto most of the time. Does, Sonorous high falsetto. Do they both have a female bassist? No. Okay. There's no ladies in the national for sure. Okay. But the pumpkins in there, right? Isn't that bass. What about oh what about like album titles? I can't think of we're it. We're gonna tap. Yeah, we're gonna tap. Oh. So we guessed that they were all related within their individual groups like the Bee Gees and the Proclaimers, which we think they're all brothers in both of those groups, so we said they're all families. Can you be a little more specific. Mm. We're going to say siblings? Yeah, the siblings. Do we have to be more specific than siblings? Yes. Brothers, then. Even though they're, they're all... <laughs> <laughs> I guess if we're more specific than siblings, brothers would be the only thing that we can know for the Bee Gees. So yeah. uh, we're going to go brothers. Uh, actually, uh, because the breeders have uh, Kim and Kelly Deal, uh, who are sisters, and they're also twins. Twins. As oh. are... Uh, the Gibbs mm. and uh, two members of the Nationals and the Proclaimers. Ah, twins. Okay, the Darn. twins. So we were well, we were around it. I just don't know enough about the no other bands. No Tegan and Sarah there. I I thought that'd be a dead giveaway if I went Tegan yeah. and Sarah. Tattoo? Were they twins? Or were they just? Never I mind. think they were lovers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and the white stripes. We st- we're still not sure about. Uh, question nine. Uh, another question about twins. The Minnesota Twins currently play in a baseball stadium named after what retail store? Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, in Minnesota, they have uh, the Timberwolves play in the Target Arena. So I don't know if they have a Target baseball field there because I think it's based in Minnesota. We just want to go Target? All right, we'll go Target. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Target. Target Field? Yeah. And the answer is Target Field. Something to aim the balls at <laughs> in the outfield. And the final question of round two. First observed in 1949, what is the appropriate mythological name given to the asteroid in our solar system that passes the closest to the sun? Mythological. Oh, <laughs> oh um, that's the one, the sun, right? Okay, we're locked in. What are you thinking? Some hail bop? Isn't it uh, Icarus who flew too close to the sun and his oh, wings melted? Oh, that would be appropriate. So, so locking with Icarus? Yes. We also went with Icarus. You guys nailed it. It is Icarus. All right. 70 points in that round, bringing our total after two rounds to 160. And uh, we picked up a great round for us, 60 points, and we are up to 140. Ooh, a barn burner. Yeah. Did you say uh, How Deep Is Your Love? I had to look up these songs. Uh, I think, or Mend a Broken Heart. Yeah, Jive Talking. Oh, that's it. Jive Talking. (laughs) Tragedy. That's another great one. Oh, so good. (laughs) All right. uh, So what are our final categories here? Your final categories, some people call me extinct. Mm -hmm. I want my MTV Europe, red and yellow, running wild. Are you going to finish that cocktail? And finally, a man named Jordan. Clearly about Tracy Jordan. Ooh, (laughs) then we're good. Yeah, I don't know what you want to do on these. Montel Jordan? Also good. Okay. Okay, all the wagers are locked in. Take it away. All right. In the category, some people call me extinct. Before going extinct, the dodo bird was endemic to what island nation located east of Madagascar? 
Next question. I want my MTV Europe. What was the first music video to air on MTV Europe when it was launched on August 1st, 1987? In the category Red and Yellow, Running Wild. Beginning with commercials in 1995, what two actors were the original voices for the Red and Yellow M&Ms? One was an SNL cast member for five seasons, the other a 13-time SNL host. In the category, Are You Going to Finish That Cocktail? Molotov cocktails were first used by what European country after the Soviets invaded them in 1939 in what would be known as the Winter War? And finally, a man named Jordan. Amman, the capital of Jordan, was once known by what name, which is also the American city where Michael Jordan played his last professional game. All right, all the answers are locked in. So if we can get those questions one more time, we'll give our answers. We can see how we did. All right. Some people call me extinct. Before going extinct, the dodo bird was endemic to what island nation located east of Madagascar? Ooh, island nation. That's not good for us. No, um, we didn't. We did uh, tens all the way down. Um, I think we just settled on the East Indies, which isn't really an island nation. So let's go uh, Philippines. All right, so we wagered 15 on this one. Uh, we were kind of thinking of a couple island nations. There's a bunch I know in that area, like Zanzibar and... But we, we settled on uh, New Caledonia because that was... I've got some weird animals, so we figured maybe the dodo was there. Yeah. Uh, some people call me Mauritius. Mm. Mauritius. Yep, that's one of those islands out that way. That would fit the clue. Uh, in the Thing. category, I want my MTV Europe. What was the first music video to air on MTV Europe when it was launched on August 1st, 1987? Yeah, I was not sure on this. Um, I think because it's so similar, uh, maybe video-wise, to uh, Video Killed a Radio Star, I just thought of 99 Love Balloons, but I feel like that's mm. too late for that. But, By Nina? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one, too. We talked about a couple of different bands, something that would be big in Europe, so we're looking at U2, Scorpion, something around there. And then we went the complete opposite direction and locked <laughs> in with Jump by Van Halen mm. and Wager 10. Both would have been awesome music videos to show, but... I Want My MTV mm. is from Money for Nothing by Dire Straits. Ah. That makes sense. Uh, red and Yellow Running Wild. Beginning with commercials in 1995, what two actors were the original voices for the Red and Yellow M&Ms? One, an SNL cast member for five seasons, and the other, a 13-time SNL host. Ten again on this one. Um, me and Neil had a discussion, and uh, we settled on John Lovitz and John Goodman. Mm. Uh, we wagered 20 on this one um, We talked about a bunch of different people I'm pretty sure Billy Crystal is the one that hosted 13 times And he's one of them uh, They still show the the old commercial around Christmas time So you still hear it occasionally And I'm not sure the other one we said Dan Aykroyd uh, The correct answers It is uh, Billy Crystal's partner uh, from Monsters, Inc. John Goodman and John Lovitz Wow, wow. nice Good. And in the category, are you going to finish that cocktail? Molotov cocktails were first used by what European country after the Soviets invaded them in 1939 in what would be known as the Winter War? I believe the Winter War is when they went up against Finland. And uh, I notably said on another podcast that Finland kicked the shit out of them. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going with Finland. Finland's a good guess. Uh, we, we talked about Finland. We wagered 10. Um, and I thought I remember hearing something about this when I was researching one of the country's fight songs or national anthems, and uh, we thought it was Hungary, so I said Hungary. The correct answer, if you need to finish a cocktail, call someone from Finland. Mm. <laughs> we are getting crushed. <laughs> and in the category, Amman, or a man named Jordan, Amman, the capital of Jordan was once known by what name, which is also the American city where Michael Jordan played his last professional NBA game. Yeah, we couldn't come up with anything. We were going through NBA cities, and nothing was really sticking. Um, so I believe we just uh, ended up going with Petra. Um, what did we wager on this one? 30? 30. For all the marbles? Ew, hopefully we get it right. So we talked uh, through a bunch of ideas, and we thought maybe it could have been a uh, a former like Greek or Roman named city. So we settled on Philadelphia. 
That is a gutsy wager. The last professional NBA game that Jordan played was against the Philadelphia 76ers. Right. Amon used to be named Philadelphia when it was under Greek and Roman control. We had talked about it. It sounded like a good idea, so I'm glad we uh, mm -hmm. we saved face at the end there. We didn't lose all our points. <laughs> so after the final round, uh, we lost only 25 after that big bet on the end to end at 135. What did you guys end up at? Uh, we lost 10 points, and that brings us to 130. Ooh. So uh, start drinking your cream. Mm -hmm. You're the cream of the crop, and uh, we'll, we'll strap our dancing shoes on and and get ready for some DDR performance video. Mm -hmm. I'm balance off balance doesn't matter. I'm better than you are, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, it, it's going to be interesting. So uh, I don't know what songs we're going to have to do. I suppose you guys get to pick. So Yeah, Cotton Eye Joe. Is that on this one? It is no. Not. Oh, well, then I, don't, then I don't care. Then. Uh, well, a special thank you to Michael for hosting an awesome game. Just uh, great tempo and great questions. Uh, we really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, anywhere uh, you'd like people to check you out? I know you said Twin City Trivia. If you'd like, like to see you uh, host a game. Uh, actually, I, I just write questions we for write questions. Twin okay. City Trivia. Uh, but Russ Friedwald and his crew uh, do a great job over there. Um, and if you ever want to come down to the brewery, send me a message on Facebook and I'll show you around. Awesome. That awesome. goes out to all the listeners as well. Yeah, we'll have to take a trip down and, and get a tour of the brewery together. For sure. And uh, take you out to dinner. Uh, well, thank you also for being a Patreon supporter. Uh, we really appreciate that and all the support you give us. No, just enjoy those dank memes. Ah, that's right. <laughs> all right, Matt's about to get drunk on dank memes. Yeah, just uh, scroll through my phone, look at some dank memes. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, check out Triptic Buing. Uh, Bu Buing? Mm. Triptic Buing. 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 Yeah, uh, yeah ch <laughs> check out Triptic Brewing. And uh, for Jeff, Matt, who's back from the Summertime, summertime Man? Summerton. Summerton Man. Uh, solving that case, uh, Ken and Michael. My name is Neil, and that was Triviali. What? I don't really care. Red and yellow, Hulk Hogan, right? So we're doing 20. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. I don't care. It's or, or McDonald's, whatever. Either way, 20. Or poisonous snakes. Cocktails. If it's poisonous snakes, I'm going to be f